You're welcome on Word of Life with me, Brenda Mahoro. Let me hope you're having fun wherever you are. This is Good Morning Family, and this segment that we are in is Word of Life every single Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We are here, of course, with Words of Life to you, to your soul, to your spirit. Just sit in and listen in. And today we are very delighted to have our very own Reverend David Asimwe, who is going to be talking about love that never gives up. Does this apply also to human beings or only to God? <laughs> it's only to God. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good morning, viewers, and praise the Lord. And I'm so happy to be part of this session this morning. And thank you, Brenda, for introducing me very well. Yeah. It is true. Mm. It only applies to God, not to man. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, because mm. when you trust in man, mm. how, <clears throat> yes, for those ones that have just seen Reverend Asime for the first time, is youth and children's pastor at St. Stephen's Church of Uganda, Chisugu, and we are very delighted to have his words on Word of Life. Please explain to us what is love that never gives up during this Christmas season. The other time, you're just going to give us like, uh, like hints, mm. what we talked about, good news to all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for those ones who are just joining in on mm. Word of Life and they are just watching us for the first time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a quick reminders, like wow, wow, pointers. Wow, wow. Yeah, uh, thanks, Brenda. We are in the Christmas period, three days to go, and everybody's very excited, um, shopping, traveling. I was just sharing with Brenda how almost at my church, the church is empty, people are for gone up country. <laughs> the, the mood is so high, yeah. the shopping, the gifts. Um, and last Thursday we talked, we, we talked about good news for all. For all. Mm. And this Christmas period, we were sharing how the good news of the baby Jesus being born to us is good news to all. We highlighted when the angels spoke to the shepherds and they came and brought the message that the child is born and the baby was born for us all and it was good news of great joy joy to all wherever you are whatever condition you are in whatever situation you're in how they are has been over the past years difficult situations or maybe you don't even have have hope for tomorrow but this christmas period reminds us that the child is born to us and it's good news to receive and this good news is for all of us. So out there as we come to the towards Christmas for these three days, this is a message and good news to all. And so we are encouraging everyone out there last Thursday to receive this message. And so this morning we continue with that series and as we talk about love that never gives up. As human beings, naturally, we know that human people love, but at some point they give up. Mm. Husbands give up. Wives do give up. The children themselves give up on their parents. We've heard stories of how children have abandoned their parents and they give up. And fiancés. Ha, that one is so common. <laughs> That one is so common. Where it's like, you know, we're yeah. going to love one another and I'm not going to give up on you. And then they read it, for you uh, and, first Corinthians. Uh, are you know, are you know. <laughs> and then after two days, like, it's over. Uh, it's and over. someone is broken. They forget what they say. And I tell you, Brenda, mm. even husband and wife, do they do you know the vows they make? Mm. Yeah, they, they do. say, in sickness. And in health. No, you know that. Yeah. You're so fresh about that. <laughs> For richer, for oh, poorer. For poor. And you vow and look at this bride and say, I am going to be there till death. Do you part? After the wedding bells and after the wedding service, you go for honeymoon. One week, mm. it's over. Some of them say that it's just vows. It's the reverend who talked, to, like who told them to speak them, but those are not the real vows. They it's the not the reverend who calls them to come to church. <laughs> you come to church by yourself, you come and do premarital counseling, <laughs> by and yourself. you do the vows. Mm. And after the vows, can you imagine you a couple me. came to me mm. after three days mm -hmm. it can't work what after three days that means they were in the honeymoon hotel. when they have done their traditional wedding and the yes. white, white wedding and it, wait, i went for the reception it mm -hmm. was so high mm. everything was great and you know the dancing yeah, yeah? and you're like ah, this is it 
after three days. Reverend, no, this can't work. They have given up. <laughs> love. They had to give up on love. And that is man. Mm. That is how life is according to man. But I want to tell you and share with you that with God, love never gives, gives up. up. He will never give up on us. It, Christmas is a story. Mm. It is part of the story of God's love. It is a series. Have you watched? Do you watch watch series? Yes, I. Where you watch sometimes. part one? But sometimes they are boring. I know, like in Nigeria, and you're watching, and then it says to God be the glory. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how did the series come from? Yeah, sometimes the end like is not <laughs> it's, real. You know, you're like, why did I waste time watching all this? You know. But this is a love story, mm. which has a very good ending. I don't know. It is still going on. We still watch, but we see God showing love to man. Mm. You know, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. It starts by saying, in the beginning, God. It's not man mm. or anything else. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And he did all the creation and he kept saying, everything was good. Mm. And then he said, verse 5, verse 26, then finally, let us make man. Not only making man, in our own image, that is the beginning of the story mm. of love. God creating man in his own image. That was love. That was love. Just how can I be made in God's image? And he gave us dominion over everything. Everything. And so God created man and gave him dominion over everything. Just have fun. Eat all the apples. Eat all, everything you want. Just enjoy yourself. And so he created Adam. He created Eve. But it starts with us disobeying God. Yeah. And we disobeyed God. But did God did to reject us? No, he did not. God's love that never gave up, he continued to walk with us. He made us special, but he continued to walk with us. And throughout the Old Testament, the whole story of series number two is man disobeying. <laughs> man disobeys <laughs> and God continued to show love. That the children of God continue to disobey, but God said, no, even if you disobey, I will take you to the promised land. Even if you reject me, I will take you to the promised land. And then he, pro he introduced the kings. He introduced the, 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 the prophets to come and encourage God's children, and the children continue to obey. Actually, the psalmist, let me read for you the psalmist. Psalm, Psalm 78 Psalm 78, verse 17, it says, But they continue to sin. He's, talk, he's talking about man. They continue to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved for. They mm. continue to sin. But because God's love never gave up, he continued to walk with the children of God. He never gave up on them. And so finally, God says, you know what? I'm not going to abandon them. Mm. So we go to series number three. It says, now let me now give my only begotten son. begotten son. So that whoever believe, at least believe in him, you will not die, but have everlasting life. Brenda, I, I noticed that God's love even gives us choice. Mm. It says, if you want to love me, it's fine. If you want to abandon me, it's okay. But it I'll still is, love you. But I'll still love you. So he sent his only child, child. And during this Christmas, we see now a child who was promised to us. That's why Isaiah chapter 9 says, a child is born to us. us. It's a gift. God would have left us with all the rebellion, with all the rejection. I mean, God, they're demanding food, God gives them food. They're demanding water, God gives them water. They even gave them clothes, they gave them shoes. They ne during the wilderness, but they continue to rebel. And God never gave up on, on them. And so during this Christmas now, we are now in series three. Mm. Seeing God's <laughs> love. Oh my goodness. God loving <clears throat> us, irrespective of how, mm. we're not even worthy to be in his presence. Even as I speak, I don't think I'm worthy to, be, to talk about God. But I come into his presence because of his grace, because of his love that never gives up. So Christmas, as we celebrate Christmas, we're trying to be reminded that this is the love of God. He's not going to give up on us, mm. and he has a plan for us. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that you who is out there, if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. 
I want you to think about that verse as you celebrate this Christmas. I want you to think about God's love as you think about that Christmas. I know you are out there and you think, for me, it's too late. I've done all evil I can talk about. I have rejected God. I have abused God. I have been rebellious. I have done all sorts of things that don't even deserve to be in God's presence. This Christmas, God is reminding us that he still loves you, irrespective of who you are. And he says, come to me as you are. He's knocking at the door and saying, my child, open the door. And if you come, if you open the door, I'll come in and dine with you because I still love you. Mm. How do we open up our hearts, Reverend? It's a matter of saying, you know, he gave us choice. Everything is all about love. He gave us choice. He says, if you believe in him. As someone who has lost hope and faith and has lost peace, maybe in their marriage, maybe yeah. they have been on that sick bed and has tuned in Church of Uganda Family TV to receive that word of life. And I like, know. Has given up on life. It's like... Uh, even love doesn't has never tested love in her own life or in his own life. Even the children have become a problem. It, it is true. Mm. It is true. It is a heart how you feel like you've abandoned, you've been abandoned. We've trusted in humans, and humans have really showed uh, us their their bad side of the story. Because their love always gives up. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Because their love always gives up. Yes. But back to your question, which is very good. How then do I allow Christ in my heart? Oh. Simply, in your heart, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you confess with your mouth, then Christ will come in and you'll be a new being. And of course, the old goes and the new comes in. Just take a step this Christmas period and say, enough is enough. I have struggled in 2022, and I'm even not hopeful for 2023. Open your heart to Jesus and say, Lord, come into my heart. And God is ready to enter in your heart. And the old will be gone, and then you will come in. And you know what? The emptiness will be filled with God's love. And God's love overflows. And you'll be filled with joy and peace and every fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it's a matter of you committing yourself and say, Lord, this Christmas, do not pass me by. I desire to receive your love because I know your love never gives up. Mm. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, it, is, it talks about God who chose us. God chose us in love and predestined us to be his. He chose us. We do not choose him. He chose us. And when I say us, I don't mean only the reverend or the bishop or the holy ones. He chose you out there and me. He chose us even before we chose him. So that is the, <clears throat> that's the love of the Lord that I'm bringing to you this morning. That as we celebrate, as we think about Christmas, sometimes it's a tradition. I'll just go for Christmas. Last mm. time I told you about the 10 days of preparing Shedder at mm. the village. And three and days remaining. Now three days. You know what's happening with the drums? Uh -huh. The bubbles are out. <laughs> being fermented. Mm. And people are waiting on Christmas to open. But oh. now it's bitter. It is sweet. By now. <laughs> <laughs> it is sweet. But be By warned. It is sweet, but be warned. Take mm. on the one glass. One glass. Because but it's can too you... sweet. If you take two, two glasses, you start singing joy Usha to the is world. addictive. It's addictive. You mm. start singing joy to the world to anybody. Joy to the <laughs> <laughs> you do a cocktail. You do a cocktail and you start laughing just you anyhow. A soda. <laughs> exactly. So as you take that, Michelle, and as you take the, 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 the food as you enjoy as a family, mm. remember, God is saying, I need your heart because I love you. You have trusted man. You have trusted yourself. Things are not working out. All I need is you because my love never gives up on you. It will never give up on us. And me personally, I have chosen that it's a tradition of, yes, every 25th is Christmas Day. But this year I am saying, God, I need something different to happen in my heart. That as I celebrate and as I go to church, that I'll pray that 2023 will be the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. That's our theme, actually, on the mm. 31st. Mm. This at our church. This we year are, will be the year of God's favor. We are favor. proclaiming that the 2023 will be the year of the Lord's favor. 
we but believe. it be a year of the Lord's favor only if we allow God to be in our hearts. I hope you are looking forward to 2023. Hallelujah. <laughs> And uh, there is someone out there who has loved and and loved and loved and has never received back. Like mm. he he's always on the giving part, has mm. never been on the receiving part. Yes. What do you have to say to such a person? Do they have to continue loving, or they also have to be at the side until they rec- they receive the love back? Yeah, of course. When God gives, mm. he encourages us to give as well. So, if you receive. This Christmas period is also time to give. To give. You give your heart. But I've given. What have you given? The love. What kind of love have you given? Praying to the maybe to my... Uh-huh. So one I've is... I've prayed, I've given, I've what? But I've never been on the receiving part. No, 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 no. You see... I feel drained. You see, all you do, just give. Mm. Thank you that you're praying for someone. During this Christmas, pray for someone. During this Christmas, give out the gifts. During this Christmas, visit the people who are lonely. Give and give. And the mm. Bible says, when you give, what happens? You receive. Thank you. You receive not only receiving, you receive in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Those are blessings. That is in the spiritual realm. That as you receive, you receive blessings. That whatever you do, the favor of the Lord will be upon you. Wherever you do, you see God walking with you because he has blessed you. Mm-hmm. So as we receive the love of God that never gives up, I want to remind you that it's also our turn and our chance to give back. Have you shared something with a friend or your neighbor? Maybe your neighbors don't even have, don't even have lunch to share or don't even have clothes to put on on Christmas. Or maybe out there in a slum near you, people are suffering. But you have so much that you're going to eat and even deposit in the bin. bin. This Christmas period, as we talk about love that never gives up, could you please share with your neighbor? Could you please share this love with someone out there who is crying? Could you please take a walk in the hospital and pray for those who are sick? Could you go to the prisons and share And once we do this, we are sharing the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you give, God gives back to you in a good measure. Mm. These are blessings that follow your ways. And so this is a clear message this Christmas period. That you come out of your comfort zone and remember someone out there and bless them. Please be reminded that you don't only bless those you know, but you can see someone that you don't know and talk to them, encourage them, make them laugh because we are sharing the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. They can come and bless me. They are going to come and bless you by them. (laughs) For you are already smiling. There's someone out there who is not smiling. (laughs) Do you know that just a smile out Mm. there can bless someone? Amen. Mm, As you sit on the border Mm. and this guy is taking you on the border, border. say hello, Mm. hi. He says, hey, because they are shocked, someone is talking to them. It's like, how are you? How are you doing? And the brother, why are you asking me? You're sharing the love of the Lord. Mm. And then tell them God loves them. If you have something, give it to them. Hey, you have ministered to your soul. Mm. And they will know that Christmas is all about the love of the Lord. So don't be only just to yourself. I won't. Like this evening, I know no one is taking me out. So take <clears throat> me out, buy for me a cup of coffee. You, I'm going to take you out there. Yes, and that's you. the love of the yeah, Lord. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have places I go to specific places. <laughs> so Christmas is that fun. Mm. Take someone out and enjoy a cup of coffee. But but Reverend, sometimes you don't feel like you don't feel like loving. You don't feel like I'm sure you've also tested that. Yeah, it happens because I'm man. Mm. My love is not like God's love. Sometimes you don't feel like, and it, indeed. It's a feeling. Yeah. But that's where you call God and say, God, this, during this Christmas, I don't feel like. I just want to be on my own. I just feel like. I just want to be on my own. I want, some of us have said, you know, this Christmas, I'm going to lock myself in my room mm. and just watch, watch movies. movies. <laughs> just buy, order for KFC. You know, here, you know, order food, wherever it comes in your room mm. and you lock yourself. You don't even care about people out there. Can you imagine if God did that to us? Would we be alive? Sometimes we don't think about it. So now think about it. If God decided to say, I'm going to lock myself and I don't care about people, because no, no one even cares about me, mm. and he decides to lock himself, 
what would happen? We would be, we would just die. be dropping dead. So, if God showed his love, let us also do that. And reach out to the people out there mm. and share that. Let us not hide. Let's reach out to those who are really in need. And you know, people, they want to be loved. They want to be talked to. They want to be prayed for. And if God has cared for us, irrespective of how we behave, how much more should we give to people out there? Because he's a compassionate God, according <coughs> to Psalm 145. God is a compassionate God. He looks at us and he cares for us. His love will never give up. I, I want to, to read for you uh, Isaiah. Mm. This is a common verse in Isaiah chapter 49. Uh, verse 15. Let me, let, me just, let me just read this. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Wow. Now, God is bringing the picture of a mother with a baby mm. breastfeeding. That is a picture of a mother who will never forget the child who will continue to love the baby, irrespective of the baby crying and ref refusing to eat food, you know, those things. No, you don't know. I know. You will get there. You will know the <laughs> where the child is eating and have to play drums uh, and play music uh, for the child to eat. Then he says, can a mother forget a child? But the Bible says, yes, she can. You've read in papers where the children are being abandoned. They are thrown in the latrines. The mothers can do that. Human beings, their love can run out, including the mother on a baby. But then he says, if a mother can do that for me, I will never forget you. My love will never run out. A mother can do that for me, I will not. Even if you are out of my scenery, even if you disobey, even if you decide to live on your own, I will not forget you. And verse, 15, verse 16, he says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Every morning he wakes up, he sees he calls you David, he calls you Brenner, he calls you Joseph, he calls you Dorcas, he calls you Francis. He mentions name by name and he says, I love you and I know you, Margaret. I know everyone out there. He, we are engraved at the palms of God's hand. So during this Christmas, Maybe you are crying. <laughs> Maybe you think indeed you are not loved and you're not cared for. God says, I will not forget you. Even if a mother forgets a child for me, I will not because you're engraved at the palms of God's hand. Wow. wow. What an encouragement. That wherever, I, by the way, let me tell you, it encourages me. Every time I feel like, ha, ah, now I think me and God, it's over. Mm. <laughs> I remember I'm still engraved. I'm not going to be deleted from his hand. Sometimes you feel like you've seen the Lord. I know. You, you don't want to pray. Oh my God, you're like, this is too much. You even want to pray, you, you can't only pray. You want to pray our Father. You what did you do <laughs> or you pray for the food and say, God, thank you for the food. And it's not even connecting. <laughs> Have you gone to church and you worship the Lord and you feel like you're not connecting? Yeah, true. You're far away from God. Mm -hmm. You go and do devotion. You start praying. You sleep. Mm -hmm. You wake up in the morning to say the grace of the Lord. Yeah, Jesus the Christ. grace of the Lord. Or sometimes you feel like you want to pray, but mm -hmm. the words are not coming out. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you're praying and you're like, oh, God, what I did is so big. I, I think, know. I think you're watching me. I know. <laughs> and, and then in your heart, you feel like God has said it's over. Yeah. The, the, the number word we use mm. as human, it will never be over with God. That's why Don Moan sings that song and says, Lord, sometimes it's hard for me to pray. But he says, I will sing. Mm. I will praise. And, and it's, he's trying to say, even it's about me. It's about my feeling. But God's love is constant. It will never fade. Mm. It will never run out. Maybe you are like us, as I share with Brenda. Maybe you're out there and you even go to church, you can't pray. You are in your room, you cannot pray. You are wherever you are and it's hard for you to connect. And you feel like God has said it's over. No, it's not over, over. with God. Keep hanging there. Keep trying. Keep going for it. And let me tell you, God's love is amazing. There's a story in the Bible. <coughs> of the prodigal son. Hey. Mm. <laughs> With Seri number four. Ooh, Seri. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Seri number four. <laughs> That's another movie. <laughs> and the child 
with his son, mm -hmm. with his father. The love is like this. And the son, the son says, it's over between you, me and you, dad. Mm -hmm. The love is over. The son gives up. We're talking about love that never gives up. And the son gives up and says, dad, it's over. Thank you for doing everything. Give me myself. I am gone. And the guy goes and tries everything until he came back to his senses. When he got lost and came back to the father. He ate with the pigs. My goodness. <laughs> the pigs would eat. And you know the pigs. Mm. They are very fast. So very you can imagine fast. he was also very mm. fast. And then the pigs are and then he was, So he's taking everything until he came back to his senses. I said, let me go back to my father. father. He was not even sure the father was going to allow him. That's why he says, maybe I'll tell my father I'm going to be one of those higher, uh, one of those servants. You know, mm. he was not sure. He didn't know that the father's love never gives up. So he says, let me go back to my father. And this father who never gives up, whose love was always out there, my goodness, yeah. you can imagine the marathon running very fast and embracing his son. Mm. And it, the son is hurt. It's now a feeling. He was feeling like, God, I'm out of you, Lord. You know, I, I have done this. He says, shut up. I don't want to hear all that, whatever you're saying. You Just know my love is too much. It overcovers whatever you're thinking. And he embraces him. He gives him the best. There's great celebration. And maybe you are like me or you're like anyone out there. And you've, you're like this prodigal son who feels so distant from God. This Christmas period, come to Jesus. His arms are still outstretched, ready to receive you like the father received the prodigal son and say, come my son, whatever you've gone through, I don't care. For me, I love you. And all I need is you. And my goodness, there was celebration. You can imagine. I'm, I'm always taking a picture of this prodigal son. He was seated eating, but he must, must, I think he was guilty. Mm, he was guilty and he yeah. was tired of the situation that he was living in. And was like, my father has a lot. Why don't I go back? And he had an experience. I'm here eating with the pig. <laughs> Remember, he had yes, an my experience. My father has gold and silver and everything. <laughs> so why wouldn't I go back? I know. Mm. Imagine the experience he had with the pigs. So when they gave him the other so food, he must he have been so like, smelly. I know. But man, you know what? They and took the him to the bathroom. Hugged him. Hugged. <laughs> what kind of love? Wow. Would you have done that? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I, or think so. <laughs> I have, I have <laughs> a call. I've got to say, I don't think I've done it because I'm the man. <laughs> but God Would you have done does it? it. Would you have done it? No, me Picture man. yourself. This is your son. Well, I am man. Mm. Maybe it would have been so hard. One, before I do sit it, down on the table. before I do it, you first sit in a corner. And I first you, teach you, you a lesson. You tell him to bring, to exactly. bring back his, your things. The things, why do you take the other things? Why did you do this, this? But he has taken the things he has eaten and he has been eating with the pigs. You, you have to first, I don't know, that is how man behaves. Eh? Mm -hmm. You even said, just first go and sleep in the other room. We've, trust, we've, be, we've I trusted know. humans, but Human. at the end, they have showed us their backs. But that is, that's why we can never compare with God. Mm, no, we can't. Ah. We can never. Wow, God says, come as you are. Come as you are. This Christmas, come as you are. Just like the prodigal son. And he'll receive you and there'll be a great celebration. Reverend, you've reminded me when you yeah. talked about come as you are. Mm. But uh, let, let's just go in for a short break. But let me, before I forget it, uh, it's, very, it's very easy to find God than finding reverends and some pastors. Come as you are, that language they no longer know. You have to come with to gun. Why is it very easy to find God than finding some reverends and pastors? Nowadays, you don't come as you are. You have to first put in Kintu Kidogo. And we're talking about love that never gives up. Why have they given us? How, why, why have they given up on us? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. But remember, these reverends and pastors, mm. they are human beings. That's why we are talking about God who is above the human beings. God whose love never gives up. These pastors sometimes, and uh, we are human beings and we give up. Uh -huh. And we desire, we are selfish. Mm. And you are saying to bless someone, to show love to someone, you must first give me. Give me the offertory. Yeah. Give me something. Uh, give me that. Uh, come with something for me to bless you. We are human. Mm. Uh, but of course, sometimes it's out of context. 
uh, sometimes maybe we are saying we have to build the church and then come and let's build the church and you have to give something to the church. It gets worse when we are selfish and we are saying for me to bless you, you must first give. That is very sad. And if you have faced someone who has done that, please pray for that person. I thought they called you. I pray for them. Pray for them that they will do what God wants them to do. Mm. But now we are talking about a God who is not going to give ask you anything. He's not going to ask you for your money. He's not going to ask you for the riches that you have. He's not going to ask you for, for, for the properties and whatever you have. He's asking for your heart. Mm. This Christmas, he says, come as you are. <clears throat> All I need is your heart. Give me your heart. Because I love you, I know who you are, I know whatever situation. I'm speaking to someone whose health has deteriorated. And maybe you know this is your last year, and maybe the doctor has said next year you're dying. Believe in God. His love is upon you, that he promises healing to you who is sick. I'm talking to someone who is addicted. Too much of alcohol, too much of whatever you're doing. We're talking about God who is not man. And he says, I know how you are. You're like the prodigal son. But come unto me. I will touch you and I'll make you well. God wants one thing from us. And that is your heart. He wants my heart and he wants your heart. Give it to him during this period of Christmas. That as we cross this new year, he has you and me and is able to walk with us. Whatever situation, financially you're handcuffed. You got a loan and you cannot even pay back. You have children, you're not sure whether they're going back in February or January. Let me tell you, with God, everything is possible. I want to, to, to remind us of the good news during this Christmas. When Jesus the baby is born, his name was Emmanuel. God with us. Mm. That is the love that is in us. And he says, I'm praying to remind you that Emmanuel, God with us. And if he's with us, nothing will happen to us. According to Romans 8. If God is for us, who will be against <coughs> us? So if God is for us and we allow him in our hearts, he will be with us every day. That's why he says, even if I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, no evil. evil. Because you know what? Once he's with us, his staff will comfort us. He is with us. That do not fear tomorrow. Do not fear what is ahead of you. Just allow him in your heart during this Christmas. Jesus, the message angels came and brought the good news to two people. And I want to share the two people and how they responded. First, they were the shepherds. Mm. I talked about last Thursday. True. When he came, they were afraid. They were lonely. They were in the midwinter and the snow was over and they were all by themselves. And the angels came and said, do not be afraid. I want to repeat that, that every day for 365 days in a year, God says, do not be afraid. His love surrounds us and he's saying, do not be afraid. And then he says, I bring good news to you, good news to all. And the shepherds did not hesitate. You can imagine the shepherds left everything. Mm. They went to worship the baby Jesus. <clears throat> Number two, were the wise men. Wise men from the east. When they received the good news, do you know what they did? Did they stay there? Mm, no. Of course. They are the wise men, but they had to humble themselves. Out there, you may think you are wise. You have everything you need. You are in your posh house or posh car. You have everything. You're like, you know what? The message I don't of need Jesus. God. I know, I don't need God. This message of God is. Uh, uh, I've, I've made it on my own. I know. Why do I need God? Why, when you are saying love, what do you mean by love? Good. I have Who's everything. Who is good? There are even wives there who are saying, my husband loves me hey. so much, I don't need God's love. He's done a lot for I me. I know. There are children who are saying, my dad and mom, they take me out, they buy everything for me. I don't need that God's love. Come on, that is man's love that will fade away. But I'm talking about God's love. And the wise men took up and they got on their camels. Brenda, the distance was too long. These guys did not take on the one day. Mm. And they walked and they went and saw the baby Jesus. And you know what they did? They worshipped. They bowed down before the baby. 
and worship Jesus. We're encouraged to worship the Lord in this period. That is a message to worship the Lord. Now, come as you are, comes in here. Mm. <laughs> when they worship the Lord, do you know what they did? They gave. They did not give just peanut. They gave gold, frankincense, everything that was very expensive, they gave to baby Jesus. Mm. Can you give your best this Christmas? Yeah, we're going to give. Give your best. You're not giving the reverend. You're not giving the pastor. You're not giving man, but you're giving God. When you give, leave the rest to God because you're giving to God. And you are saying, thank you, Lord. And one of the things as families we can do, do, we can do during this Christmas is to organize yourselves as a family and prepare for a proper thanksgiving as a family. And when it comes to church or any time at home, you give to the Lord as a family. Give to the Lord as an individual. And say, thank you, Lord, that you have been so caring. Your love has not given up on me. And give the best. And the wise men gave the best to Jesus. You can do the same. I can do the same. Let's not forget to give the best to Jesus this Christmas. And when we give, he gives us back in a good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Those are blessings that you don't want to miss. True. <clears throat> Reverend, as we're enjoying this Christmas and you talked about good news to all, mm. uh, should we forget about Easter or it's a sandwich? Hey, Easter is so special. It is still a series now. Remember, mm. that was Christmas series, part four. Eh? No, now now we're Easter is part five. Part five. <laughs> <laughs> he dies. He still dies, remember. Mm. He dies for you and me. It was not easy, by the way. Remember, he says, not my will, but your will, Abba Father. Mm. Jesus, it was painful at the cross. And he cries. It was so hard. But he did it that you and me will not die. You know, even when those guys were sharing his cloth mm. down there. And then he looked at them and says, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they are doing. That is the love of God. That even when we don't know what we are doing, he is mm. praying for us. And say, I, I know, I know, you don't know what you're doing. But all I'm doing, I am patiently waiting for you. <coughs> and he's still patient waiting for you out there. In your stubbornness, thinking that you are so famous, you are untouchable. He says, I don't know what you are doing. And he's waiting for you. Do you know that during this Christmas, you can miss Christmas? I, I can? Yes, How? amid this excitement. How? Uh, amid this excitement. How? You can what? go shopping. You can put on the best nice dress. Mm. I have seen it in your wardrobe. I know what you're going to put on. <laughs> I know what you're going. I know what you're going to you eat. You can't guess. I know what you're going to eat over Christmas. I know you've organized parties and you have baptism and, and you have started traveling. I know people, someone is even traveling Town now. Town is on fire. Town is on fire. The, when you, I try to move around at night, <laughs> just to admire the goodness of the Lord, and mm. the lights are all over with all. All this excitement and your amid this excitement, you can still miss Christmas. The misotos are in the house. Oh, you're eating and you're enjoying. You can still miss the, the Christmas. Mm. Let me share with you someone who missed Christmas. Tell me. There was a guy, he had a hotel. He was so busy and everybody was enjoying. I think all the rooms were full. Um, I don't know whether they were full, but there was great dancing in the hotel. Mm. Everything was happening. And his business was booming. You can imagine, he was like, yeah, I'm Mary, a rich yeah. man, I have everything. And Mary and Joseph come with baby Jesus. And they come to this man who had everything. His business was doing well. There was great celebration. There was great dancing. And baby Jesus and Joseph, I mean Mary and Joseph come with baby Jesus. And that's this man, the innkeeper. Can we have a room for the baby to be born? Mm -hmm. Do you know what he said? No. I have no room. Come on, I'm busy. Mm. The place is busy. If he knew he was the king of kings and the lord of lords. Even up now, we would still talk about him. I know. If he, knew, he would, would he fail to get a room? No. You just tell people to get out and have Jesus there. But he says, I have no room. I mean, it's all the excitement. He had no room for baby Jesus. And he says, you know what? We're busy here. Everything is well. Take him the other side. 
where you know I have cattle, Mm-mm. where they sleep, <laughs> where they feed from. Take your baby they there. Crawl. Take your baby there. I am busy here. I have everything. The innkeeper missed Christmas because he had no room for Jesus. Are you ready? Do you have room for Jesus this Christmas? You can be out of that. You can do everything. But if you don't give room to the baby Jesus who is being born, Christmas will pass you by. Now you pray. And you, I pray that you even sing that song that says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my cry. And that is a song that we are supposed to be singing and say, if amid this excitement, amid this everything I have, amid this joy, create room for Jesus. And if you create room for Jesus, he will come in and dine with you. And I can imagine the innkeeper, mm. even up to now, would be talking about we him. We would, we would. He would have been blessed in his home. You know, once Christ is in your house, oh, you'll be blessed. He will not pass you by if you have allow him in your room. So I pray that you have been stubborn for 20 years, you've been stubborn for 15 years, for the many past years, even when you went through the COVID period and the Ebola period and God protected you, you're still saying, I can do on my own. Mm. That is the devil deceiving you. This is a time to say, God, you have been faithful. I have not died of COVID. I've not died of Ebola. I've not died because of this economic situation in my country. Lord, now I choose to give you my heart. And indeed, he'll give you everything you need. Once Christ is in us, everything is possible. That's why he told Mary, the angel, that yeah. with God, everything is possible. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. Maybe someone out there has tried, they have tried, on the, you know how you hustle? Mm. You hustle, you try, things don't work out. It's because the equation is missing, baby Jesus. Being born, and you give the baby your room, and once you give him your room, everything else come into the equation. Yeah, true. Amen. I hope you're not going to miss Jesus this Christmas. Why would I? Don't miss. I can't. I'm um, not going to even to shop. Even when they um, take you out uh, and you're excited saying, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> I won't. Just open your heart I and won't. allow him in there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the show is moving so fast. I don't feel, I don't want it to end. I know, but I know. of course, we are remaining with four minutes. Uh, Reverend, you're just because you're the youth pastor mm. and uh, the youth out there, some of them, I'm sure, they are preparing themselves to go to bars during this Christmas to spend their Christmas festivities out there. And some of them are thinking, I'm going to do this weird thing on Christmas because I overheard some youth in a taxi and they were conversing that on Christmas it's when they're making their 18th birthday and they're going to spoil themselves and the spoiling they're talking about is really, really weirdo. So you're going to give the message to all the youth out there and uh, you're going to encourage them and you're going to give them that uh, that word of a father because I'm sure you're a father. Yes, I am. I'm a father and uh, Nathan, Nolan, Nineta, Nehemiah mm. these are uh, my buddies <laughs> <laughs> and Docas as well and I send my Christmas love to them including my big family my mom and my siblings but the Bible says look carefully how you walk not as unwise but as wise people. I pray that during this Christmas period, you'll be wise. That's according to Ephesians 5.15. I want you to spend wisely. Remember, there's life to live in January. There's life to live thereafter. Spend wisely. Number two, be very careful because you might is they die of funny diseases like HIV. Be wise how you spend your body. Be wise how you spend your finances. Be wise how you spend your time. Christmas is about Jesus. Christmas is all about giving Jesus in our hearts. So as we get excited, yes, families come together, have fun, play games, eat and have merry, but be wise how you spend because we have another life to live and Christ is there to lead us. I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish everyone out there, even those who don't feel like they are going to have Christmas and have fun, Christmas is about Jesus. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas to all of you, even those in hospitals, those in prisons, 
those who are crying, all those who are having merry, everyone, I wish you a merry Christmas. And I pray that you be like the wise men. You be the shepherds and you worship the king of kings. The young people out there, be careful how you spend your time. Be wise because the days are so evil. The young people, I'm excited at our church who are ready to go for camp. And if you're a young person and you're 12 years and above, we have camp on the 2nd of January. Please do come and join us. We're going to have a blast. Come to St. Stephen's. I'll register you. And as young people, this is how we are going to spend our time wisely. Have a happy new year as well. May the Lord bless you. And I want to pray for someone out there. Even as you hear the message of God's love, you don't feel it. Your heart is far away. You feel you're far away from God. You feel so frustrated. You're even hopeless. And the situation is not well. Let me just pray for you. And I want you to believe that God is by your side. And his love never gives up. Heavenly Father, I pray for someone out there who feels like love is, is meaningless. They have tried on their own and things are not working out. I pray that Heavenly Father... You speak to each one of them. I pray that you engulf them and show them your love because you're a compassionate God. During this Christmas period, as we celebrate and wait for the new year 2023, remind them that you're God from the beginning to the end. That you are the Alpha and the Omega who is in charge of every situation. Speak to them, Heavenly Father, a word of hope. Remind them that you are in charge in whatever situation that nothing will be against them. Speak love to those who are empty. Speak love to those who are not loved. Speak love to those who are, who are lost in the world. And remind them that you are there for them. Lord, even as we celebrate this Christmas as a nation, we speak peace in this nation. We speak peace in our homes. And we pray that above all, you reign. Now may that blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you. And remain with you now and forever. And we all say... Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Reverend. It has really been a blessing to have you this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show, uh, let me let me be sure that out there you were also blessed. It has been a blessing to have you today on the show. A word of life with me, Brenda Mahora. I love you so much. Have yourself a beautiful Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I love you so much. Thank you for supporting us all this time, all these days and three days remaining to uh, to Christmas and these days are evil like the reverend said these days are evil so be mindful of everything that you're doing thank you so much I love you